Welcome to the Nebraska Shootaround. Anna Bellinghausen, Drake Keeler, alongside with you to talk some women's hoops for the Cornhuskers. Drake, this team's off three wins, and most recently, of course, their win at home, 70-51 over Minnesota. Drake, what did you take away most from this season series split? Yeah, it was good to see uh, get get a win after uh, losing at Minnesota. Obviously, this is a very different Minnesota team. They're without Mar Braun, their best player. We're missing their center, starting centers too. She's been really good, um, or or was good in that first matchup for sure. Big presence inside. Um, so yeah, Nebraska took care of business, got out fast. Lexis Markowski had ten rebounds in the first half. You know, she's she's put up like ten points, twelve rebounds in the last two games, which seems like pretty normal but you know she's done like most of that work in those first halves uh, so she's been really impressive lately obviously senior night uh, really good to see pretty much everyone got involved uh, so that, that was a good good win um, they won by 19 I think that was with a 10-0 run by Minnesota and that one so yeah yeah Drake you mentioned senior night and Darian White was out with injury but got a sub in the last couple possessions to you know get her flowers there being a senior of course her only year uh, transferring in with Nebraska as a grad student, but still has made a huge impact on the program just in one year. But let's go through those seniors um, and what their options are, who can stay, who has to go. Yeah, obviously Jazz made the decision to come back uh, last year. Uh, so this will be her last year. We saw her play for the last time in Pinnacle Bank Arena. Um, so it's obviously a great player has changed, uh, helped, helped change the kind of trajectory, the floor for this program and set it set them up for success moving forward these last what will be three postseason appearances um it's really impressive um darian the grad transfer uh, was kind of surprising uh, when she checked in late there um she was she was not in uniform and then all of a sudden there she is checking in uh walks through those last couple possessions um but yeah this is her last year as well uh, Annika, Annika Stewart and Maddie Kroll, I believe they have the option to come back for one more year. The kind of discussion and, and the way players and coaches have been talking about it has not necessarily suggested that they will, but, you know, they have that option. They have that choice. They haven't said anything um, on that um, publicly. So they, they, they will have that option to come back and, you know, continue to bring depth to the team. Uh, so that'll be something to look for, for sure, um, when, when that is finalized, uh, because, you know, obviously those are two players that have meant a lot to the program. Yeah, I mean, you think about Jazz Shelley and just what she's meant and how much excitement there was. I remember talking to her preseason and she said she wanted to come back because this team has a special story to write, and I think they are doing it. Um, has it impressed you just the consistency of success this season for Nebraska and what they've been able to accomplish so far? Yeah, it, it's good. You know, whenever you have tournament expectations and you meet those, that's good to see. You know, they lost Isabel Bourne in the offseason. She did not take that fifth year, and Natalie Potts came in and filled that role um, and, and has done it really well. Uh, so they, they've they really – looks like a well-coached team. You know, I think – a lot of worry kind of crept in after that loss to Rutgers, rightfully so. Um, and it kind of seemed like this might be a little like last year where they just slip out of the tournament picture down the stretch. And, you know, it's another disappointing year, but they totally flipped that around, obviously get the win at Michigan, win versus Iowa. You know, they it was really impressive for them for sure. Um, so, yeah, it's been – they've set out to get back to the tournament, and they've done that uh, behind Jazz Shelley and Alexis Markowski. Yeah, you mentioned Natalie Potts there, of course, the freshman who's just wowed everyone in the Big Ten and picked up another Big Ten Player of the Week honor in that freshman category. What's been so impressive to you about Natalie and just how composed she is out there so young? Yeah, obviously, you know, the thing to talk about her is just like the great motor. She's running around on the floor, getting rebounds, you know, doing what – you know, they're not going to run kind of the offense through her or and she has, you know, defensive lapses here and there, but she makes plays. Right. Uh, she, she's made so many big plays. She was a huge. But you look at pretty much the biggest wins for this team. She was a massive part of all of them. Uh, I think about the and there's been so many second halves where she's just dominating and it feels like she's soaking up every rebound. Um, so she's been really impressive. Double digit points. She's, you know, you look at, there are three freshmen in the big 10 averaging double digit points. Um, and the other two are doing it on over 30 minutes a game. She's at like 22 or so, like, you know, 
mid low twenties or something like that. So it's been really impressive how productive she's been right away and just massive part of where this team's at right now. Do you think she's a lock for freshman of the year in the Big Ten? Yeah, I think it feels like it. You know, she's won most of the freshman of the week awards. Uh, has kind of had. It, you know, team success does matter a little bit, and Nebraska's better than I think. I think the other to go back, just the other two contenders would be uh, Grace Graholski from Minnesota, who is I think the top scoring freshman right now. I think at eleven, she's a little bit above Potts. Um, and then Mary Ashley Stevenson has been good at Purdue. Um, they've again done it on thirty plus minutes. You know, haven't been quite as efficient necessarily. Graholski has a three point shooting, um, so, but. You know, Potts has been a really, really big impact player for a tournament level team. And, you know, you watch her play and it's clear, you know, I think I think it's clear that she's the best freshman in the Big Ten. And I think they'll honor her with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Continuing on the uh, season award um, trail here, Logan Nisley could also potentially make that all freshman team. And then you bring in the question of will Alexis Markowski and Jazz Shelley both make first team all conference? What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, I think you it. It's kind of, you know, it is a little bit of a weaker uh, freshman class uh, this year in the Big Ten um, where, you know, you don't have any necessarily any players that have come in and been, you know, immediate superstars, right? Um, and the depth, you know, you look past those top three I mentioned, it's kind of players all in that seven points, six points a game range and players that have, you know, played here and there. Um, but, you know, Logan Nisley, Moving into the starting lineup down the stretch, um, I think she's only like eighth um, among freshmen in the Big Ten scoring, um, but six points a game has had some really big performances, obviously was a key factor in the win over Iowa. I, I think you, she's one of the more efficient freshmen, one of the better shooters among them. Um, so I think I think you look at that, and I think, I think she's deserving of that um, all-freshman team spot. For sure. Um, and then Alex Markowski and Jazz Shelley, um, they were both on the preseason all Big Ten list that didn't include any transfers, to be fair. So like player like Celeste Taylor will be in that mix now um, at Ohio State. But I think it's really interesting. I think Markowski's kind of more of a lock. Uh, so I think she's leading scorer, leading rebounder, you know, I think there's a lot of respect for the steps she's taken this year. She was second team, all big 10 while jazz was first last year. Uh, but you know, it feels like those, those two are kind of like at the same level, one, a one B type situation. So I I'm curious to see if jazz also makes it because she hasn't quite, she made it last year voted in by the coaches. And I think if she makes it this year, it'll be the coaches again. Uh, voting her in just because of the impact she makes and the she is the leader for this team um, passing defense but you know she hasn't had the efficiency scoring numbers are a little down so you know you, you could she might be you know one of those first players on the second team but I, I'm really interested to see where they put her because I, I I think you you could it's justifiable either way mm -hmm. let's move on to the big Ten standings right now Nebraska sits at fourth place. So tell us about that picture of what Nebraska needs to do to get a great spot in a uh, two-time buy there in the, in the Big Ten. Uh, yeah, you're in a good spot right now, and it's not bad to have, you know, the worst-case scenario be fifth place um, where – but, you know, they want that double buy. And to do that, the most straightforward way is beating Illinois, winning at Illinois. That's a hard – Thing to do. Illinois has been really good as of late. Nebraska's got a win over them already, but that is a good team. A um, little bit better, better than their record indicates. Um, or, you know, if they do lose that game, they have to watch out for Michigan State. You know, Michigan State plays Illinois on Thursday. If they lose that game, Nebraska will go into Sunday knowing they have the double bye locked up. Otherwise, it'll be Michigan State has to lose one of those last two first Illinois or at Wisconsin. Um, Michigan State's been really consistent this year, a um, bit more than Nebraska, I'd say. Um, and I, I, you know, I think you you, you want to just take the path and beat Illinois because I, I don't think you want to risk. I, obviously, you'll know what you need to do on Sunday, but I, I think I think that's a much safer bet than relying on Michigan State to lose one of those last two. Yeah, Drake. How do they sit in the March Madness picture now? Yeah, they've kind of been stuck on that eight seed line. Some kind of predict them as nine seed. I think I saw like one seven seed projection, but I, I think, you know, if they 
selected them today, they'd probably be an eight seed. Um, and you wonder like what they would need to do to move up to that seven seed line, which is, you know, a little better, you know, potentially get a two seed in the round of 32. Um, so I think they would probably, obviously that you would have to beat Illinois for that. If you lose to Illinois, you're probably looking at eight or nine seed. Um, because Illinois is not a bad team. It's not a bad loss at all. Um, but, and then you probably have to beat, you know, likely Michigan state in the big 10 quarterfinals as well. Um, they would have Michigan state would have a game they would have to win, but assuming they would do that, you know, that, that would be two good wins at Illinois against Michigan state again on neutral site. I feel like that at that point, you know, you would probably move up a seed line into the, you know, that seven range. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, you could always make some noise in that big 10 tournament and, uh, you never know where you could end up there in that March Madness bracket. Well, Drake, thanks so much for the time today. That'll do it for the Nebraska shoot-around. Make sure you follow at Drake Keeler and, of course, at Hill Varsity for all your Nebraska hoops coverage. Thanks so much for joining us.